Hello friends, welcome to our channel Contemporary Literary Review India. Before I move ahead, please subscribe to our channel. Hello, Mr. Uh, Ajinkya Bhasme. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good. So I believe you are rocking because you have uh, written so many books. Okay, right. <laughs> so would you uh, please yeah. introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. My name is Ajinkya Bhasme. I am 30 years old. I'm still getting the hang of turning 30. Very recently turned 30. <laughs> Not okay. enjoying the feeling very much, <laughs> but still okay. getting the hang of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Majorly carbon and water. Uh, and that um, tells you that I am a science nerd. I was a scientist for about four and a half years. Oh, My graduation right. is from IIT Bombay in chemical engineering. Uh, post that, I uh, made drugs, medicines. Uh, so I was a scientist with a big, big pharmaceutical company. And now I am a full-time um, full time HR and a people analyst. I also write books. Uh, I have three best-selling novels out there. And all three of them are getting made into movies now. Oh, great. So that's great. A about oh, my God. So they all, all of them are getting into movies. Oh my God. Yes. That is, yes. That is a big jump, I believe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So I believe that you soon will become a, 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 a celebrity, right? <laughs> Let's hope. Okay. 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 Okay, so how did you start uh, creative writing? Because creative writing is something different. And as uh, you already mentioned that, you had been in science discipline for quite long time in academics as well as in profession. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think like every creative writing journey begins, mine also began as a story listener. I think as human beings, we all love to listen to stories. Even now with this interview, I think what we are doing is essentially storytelling and your audiences would be listening. Um, so like every child, I had this huge interest in listening to great stories, fictions. And um, the, I, I was a very, very uh, ADHD kind of a child, very attention deficit, hyperactive disorder kind of a person did not sit at one place at all. Um, so I, in order to calm me, my mother used to engage me in some activities and she used to be like, mm -hmm. here, this is a story and, and uh, this is how it pans out and this is how uh, the story is, is going to happen or something like that. And she just give me incomplete stories and what do you think is going to happen next? Um, something like that but uh, you know like the age-old stories of Aladdin or even Akbar Birbal, Gulba Kavli, Mahabharat Raman, all these epics were done and dusted so quickly that it, it was possibly a blink of an eye um, and then I was bored again and I was like where do I get more stories where do I find more stories and then she is like this child is going to be the death of me so where should I get more stories from and then she is, she is a lawyer. She used to practice criminal law at that time. Now she practices consumer. Uh, so she thought it was a good idea to tell me stories from her courtroom. But I was honestly not getting scared of um, those usual uh, threats that mothers usually give to children that soja varna bhoot jayega, soja varna monster jayega. Right. I, I was like, I know it's fictional. He's not going to come. There is no monster. So she thought it was a great idea to start telling me stories uh, from her courtroom and start telling me stories about criminals who used to kidnap children and all. And oh my God. she used to show it to me. You know? She used to show it to me, their faces and newspapers and everything. And I was like, damn, this is truth. This is not a fake story. This is something which is actually happening in real world. Okay. And then she used to be like, 
sleep otherwise these two ladies who kidnap uh, children they would come and take you away and i was like yeah 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 i would go off to sleep okay, um, okay. so ever since that i was quite fascinated by stories quite quite fascinated by how characters behave how people are good bad ugly grey characters i love grey characters and that is where i started writing smaller things as an assignment from my mother because i again i was quite hyperactive so she used to tell me okay why don't you write a story now? why don't you like uh, write a poem or something creative so i used to be like okay let me try so i started with poems i started with short four liners um very very bad poems <laughs> I, i am one thing you need to know about me is i i am naturally a very uncool person i don't do cool things okay. at all okay. so when when i get an opportunity to do cool things when somebody tells me hey this is cool writing a poem is cool please write the poems so i i began writing poems and honestly they were like anu malik shairies they were they were, they were most okay. like four line uh, whatever rhymes oh. it rhymes okay okay like, history history oh my mystery i love this subject very very maybe mary or cadbury i love this subject very very some something absolute nonsense like that. okay okay uh, but the good part was that my my teachers and and my seniors and my peers uh, they were all very appreciative of this and they were all very very um they, they, they were encouraging and they used to push me right more do well you can do better and once my principal told me that uh, hey why don't you write a story instead you have oh. written poems so long why don't you write a story instead and then i wrote a story i was a two page story uh, is too bad <laughs> it's terrible um the, it was about a farmer who commits suicide and then his family dies and then every single person in his house dies is such a depressing story and then my principal reads this two page and she goes like Ajinkya promise me one thing you are not going to write any story ever again in your life because this is absolute nonsense why are you writing such depressing stuff and then i took that as a challenge that how can i not write something how can this not be appreciated and then i then i wrote my first book uh, it was at that time not many people know this but it was uh, my first book was published actually when i was 14 years old i oh. started writing it when i was like 12 or 13 okay and uh, it's a small kidish novel written by a kid not great english mm-hmm. uh, but retained the essence of of the material the material is good the writing is maybe could be a lot better uh but it got published and that was a feat and and the principal was there for the book launch and uh, she admitted in front of the whole crowd that i read the material and i thought that I was it was quite good for that age and uh, this is the book it's called okay. who in the well of dangers oh uh-huh. and it's about a ghost um so that's where it all started and from there i i just um, enjoyed doing research enjoying uh, reading people understanding where their thoughts are coming from i did a diploma in forensic psychology psychotherapy and uh, i started i i i started visiting these places of uh, deviant mental health institutes uh, and i started making notes honestly and then then one day i was in a coffee shop uh, with my pen down and i i was wondering what should i write and um this thought just kind of appeared to me out of nowhere uh, of my mother narrating me the story of these two uh, female serial killers in india which was in i think 1996 and uh, that time it was it was too big and, and just it just gave me goosebumps all over my body and i realized that this is the moment that i need to write about this material so i wrote the okay. first sentence of my uh first mature book ever which is um, to err is human to forgive is divine and then there are crimes that are so cold blooded and harrowing that even the devil gets afraid to walk in the dark oh and that's where the journey began <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god you, you are scaring me <laughs> <laughs> okay. you know like real life is is kind of scary <laughs> <laughs> okay so how many books have you written till date miss got published 
um there are three mature books that i have written like mm-hmm. uh, novels uh, that i have written there is one corporate book that i wrote which is published only in europe uh, which is about business and there is this um, baby book that, <laughs> that i wrote as a kid but okay. uh, if somebody asks me this question i i just say that there are three books mm-hmm. the first is when the devil was first the second is as death mm-hmm. stared back and the third is seven hours and partner okay okay would you please give us a glimpse about each of your fictions particularly these three books sure just in brief um, yeah uh, mm. so the first one is when the devil was first which is this one okay. um when the devil <laughs> so when the devil whispers is based mm. on the two female serial killers in india uh, you know how india does not give capital punishment we don't believe in killing people we believe in restoration we believe that uh, um maybe 100 criminals could go free but one innocent should not ever be in prison uh, right. although i don't know how true that is going to be in the justice system <laughs> considering what is happening nowadays but uh, having said that uh, this was a very peculiar case these were india's first female serial killers and they had killed over 40 children allegedly okay, from okay. the Where? age of 2 months old to 13 years old which place it was it was in maharashtra it was across pune satara sangli okay. um it was it, it was across this location and there were like a span of um of this uh, and they they used to abduct children and then they used to kill them okay uh, allegedly killed 40 children mass murdered uh, had this big um, big uh, kind of a they call it a dungeon for for the mm. lack of a better word uh, call it a dungeon and had these bones of little kids lying around and everything when the police found out uh, so this was a very peculiar case for a reason because it was so gruesome and the other reason was every single court of law in india gave them the death penalty and they became india's first female uh, female convicts who were supposed to be sent to the gallows unfortunately like very recently there has been a development that they are no longer going to be sent to the gallows they are given uh, life imprisonment now um because they have pleaded and pleaded and the president denied their mercy petition petition earlier but this president has um approved the mercy petition and and now they are going to be in life imprisonment so the book is based on that the book is based on that incident and of course it is uh, it is uh, packaged in an entertaining format so that people do not feel that it is a blog post or it is a documentary uh so it is packaged in a format with a prime character with multiple stories happening in parallel and then converging kind of in one place together okay. so that is about when the devil whispers okay my second book is uh, this which is called as death stared as back death stared back okay yes. yes as death stared back mm. so as death stared back is about a mother and son relationship it's very close to me um it took me 4 years to write the first book it took me 4 years of research to write the first book it took me 2 and a half years of research to write this one uh, as death stared back and it is about a woman who loses her husband uh, in an accident and the husband gets cremated in front of everyone and then 10 years later suddenly her husband comes back in flesh it's okay. not a ghost story that i can okay. tell you for sure it's okay. a, it's not a ghost story he's not a ghost everybody sees him okay, and okay. suddenly tanjana and her son are the only people who know that this person who is who is who has mm-hmm. come back mm-hmm. or is pretending to be puni mm-hmm. he's not he's some imposter so he okay. tries his best to convince them that he's not an an imposter while the mother kind of person uh, know that there is some alternative plan that this person has mm. uh, so it's the story of survival of this mother and son and it's a it's a very interesting tale you would never know what comes next 
there are so many plot twists and all uh, and in the end you will never guess what is going to happen in the end it is an emotional roller coaster this book and it is based on a true story um again so you know i have fictionalized a lot of elements but it is it talks about a really really peculiar mental health problem okay. and as i said i am interested in mental health a lot so i in all my books i will have an either an underlying of mental health or i will have a proper mental health awareness uh, okay. spectrum okay. Okay. okay 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 now my third book is called seven hours at bhata road it is okay. here i don't have a physical copy because it's not published uh, on paper i have only published it on kindle okay. seven hours at bhata road was a small project that i tried to do during the lockdown in the lockdown i was quite mm-hmm. bored and uh, i had this story at the back of my mind and a lot of my readers were asking ajinkya why always like psychology and mental health why not like scare us with ghosts and all something okay. occult something like uh, bhoot preet and uh, okay. dian chudel um, okay. so i thought maybe i'll give my readers a good spin to it with with an ajinkya bhasme twist to it so uh, this is about this story is about this modern day tale of a woman asking people for lift and if you give her lift she kills you uh, okay. it's a it's a story that everyone knows it's a story that everyone at least one point in time in our life we have heard because we are indians uh, either we personally have seen a ghost or we know somebody who has personally seen a ghost or has like that ghostly experience okay. uh, so so it, it's in our indian nature either our bua fufa or some mama ji or right, right. has like personally experienced something so it, it, it's it's based on that pop culture story of this woman asking for mm-hmm. but i give this a, a, a spin in a way that um in in uh, garud puran there are uh, 27 levels of hell okay and there is this peculiar village in maharashtra uh, it's a fictional village called bhata mm-hmm. that has somehow understood how hell works and they have they are now tricking hell so they commit any sin that they want in that village and oh. through this small ritual they do this small ritual and and they will not go to hell they will avoid oh. going from going to hell great great so this small ritual is how how they are like cheating hell now hell feels cheated hell feels that what are they doing they are cheating me so now hell creates a prophecy which says that if you don't believe in hell hell is going to come to you so okay. the birth of the 28th level of hell on earth is going to be in bhata and that's the entire story of how hell takes birth and how it oh. wants to expand oh, okay okay that's great so in my you so in you my first you have book, i talk about schizophrenia in my mm-hmm. second book i talk about catatonia and cabras mm-hmm. and in my third book i talk about epilepsy so all these books have some kind of a mental health condition mm-hmm. um, explained or an awareness created about it okay okay you have uh, created a very compelling environment <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you so much okay 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 according to you which one of your books is the best one and why is actually as a writer you may be liking each one okay but yeah. the best one single one you can name i'm um, sure i mean like you said as a writer i may be liking all three of my books i do love all three of my books but one one that i i wouldn't say best but one that is closest to my heart which which i absolutely freaked out while writing is this one as death stared back okay okay um the reason being that it is the story of a mother and son and we have already spoken about how my mother has influenced my writing mm-hmm. throughout mm-hmm. Uh, throughout my journey and i i love my mother i honestly have a very 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 loving bond with her and we are quite close i'm i'm a, i'm an only child i'm pampered and spoiled by her <laughs> so uh this is the story that actually does remind me of of my mom and the way the story pans out is really really a, an emotional roller coaster you will have adrenaline oxytocin dopamine every hormone induced in our, in your brain and and you'd feel something it mm-hmm. uh, i like stories that 
make you ask questions. I like stories that would make you go, what did I just read? What happened here? And they make you question your reality. They make you question mm-hmm. everything that you're doing. And if even one reader, for me, mm-hmm. if even one reader can make themselves question like that through my book, it, it, it is going to be uh, it is going to be something very fulfilling and surpassing for me. Right, right. So this book for me, I spent three days writing the climactic scene without seeing the sunlight. I had these delusions that were happening to me. Uh, curtains closed, only two liters bottle of water next to me, some snacks. As continuously writing, eating, did not know sleep, did not know hunger, oh, did oh. not know thirst. At the end of the third day, I, I stepped out of my house and I felt delusional. I felt like I'm scared of sunlight. Okay. And it uh-huh. took me about 12, 10 to 12 hours to get back to normal. And I knew that this book was going to affect people the same way it affected me when I was writing. So it's <laughs> certainly close okay. to me. Okay, that's great. Okay, from sales point of view, which one is selling high? Um, I mean, I think th- all three of them have been bestsellers. So okay. they are all selling high. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, something which is quite surprising for me is that I'm an Indian author. These stories are Indian stories. They're based in India. Mm-hmm. surprisingly they sell well in us i have more sales of my books in the us market than i have in india and it's mm-hmm. quite surprising to me and i think maybe it's because we don't read we have prejudice towards indian authors our audience our, our readers may have prejudice towards indian authors and they might come with a preconceived notion that uh, an indie author or a new author may not be as great as as say like a Stephen King or a Dan Brown or say J.K. Rowling or the likes of it. Mm-hmm. Um, having said that, maybe there is also that there are fewer readers in India. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Uh, but if I talk about my Indian audiences, mm-hmm. again, as that thread back is their favorite. They, they, mm-hmm. they have all great things to say on their nightstands. There are readers who have read it like three times, five times and still cry mm-hmm. towards the end. So <laughs> I think that is the book I would choose. Okay, okay. So, okay, you have already highlighted how, uh, in fact, you began writing. But how horror element came to your mind as uh, an element in your writing? I think it goes back to my childhood again, doesn't it? Because my mother used to tell me stories that were scary. And I think... You know, it's something to do with your uh, brain and it's something to do with with the hormones that are released in your brain. Some people enjoy roller coasters. Some people don't enjoy roller coasters. Some people enjoy scary movies. Some people don't enjoy them. Hmm. What actually scaring or fear or, or this roller coaster does is it induces an anxiety in you which will let your heart pump faster. It will it will release some pleasure inducing hormones in your brain, which is oxytocin, dopamine, adrenaline, all these. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, so these would be induced in your brain and then you will inherently feel that pleasure. Sometimes when people get scared, that momentarily, that falling of your heart into your stomach happens or the heart in your mouth happens. But right. then after that moment has passed, you feel that your muscles have relaxed completely, you're sweating, your body temperature drops and your heart is like, regulating your heartbeat slowly slowly and then you begin smiling or you begin laughing and that is kind of something that that i used to love i used to love getting like now i love getting scared i love scary movies they give me oh. this adrenaline rush right so when you hear my mother narrating to me stories of monsters and all and mind you all mythological books in india are borderline horror <laughs> you cannot say there are not horror the appearance of rakshas the appearance of ravana the mahabharata's war they're, they're all horrifying and if you actually get into the depths of it mm-hmm. it is borderline horror it is borderline like mythological horror if you want to call it that way. we are a land of ghosts we are a land of witches we are a land of jinns we, we are a land of such diversity in horror as well. Our, uh-huh. our, 
ghosts are dimes. <laughs> let's let's just say that every every aspect of it is like fifty kilometers in India. You go somewhere. Every fifty mm-hmm. kilometers, your story changes. They will have like a new horror element to to exactly, their story. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, यहाँ पे पेड़ था यहाँ पे आत्मा लटकती है यू गो टू अनदर विलेज देर इज अल जहाँ पे एक लड़की ने सुसाइड किया तो उसकी आत्मा भटकती है देर इज समर एल्स यू गो इन साउथ इंडिया देर इज अल आउटसाइड द टेम्पल द बेगर फील्ड इनसेल्फ उसकी आत्मा भटकती है एवरी सिंगल प्लेस आई आई टी भी नहीं छोड़ा था इवन आई आई टी हैज हॉर स्टोरी देर इज हॉस्टल सेवन देर इज अ पर्टिक्युलर बाथरूम इन दैट हॉस्टल where they say that at night if you go to that washroom there's only one light that blinks there and on the third bathroom if you take a bath there is on top of it there is like a guy who sits and stares at you because he like <laughs> slipped and died there that is not a true story nobody slipped and died there but this is what it is like and some some students will get scared and then in iit there is another story that uh, there is a lakeside road wahan pe agar raat ko jaoge to wahan pe आहट की एक गुड़िया लटकती है एंड देन दैट दैट डॉल इज पॉसिबली गोट अ नन ऑफ दैट इज ट्रू बट एनीवे दैट दैट राइट दैट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अ कल्चर आई थिंक हॉरर इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अ कल्चर एंड दैट्स व्हाई आई थॉट दैट हॉरर इज द बेस्ट वे टू गो फॉर मी बिकॉज़ आई आई एंड आई डाइव इन अ वेरी वेरी स्पेसिफिक काइंड ऑफ हॉरर व्हिच इज साइकोलॉजिकल हॉरर एंड दैट इटसेल्फ इज सो कूल एंड स्कैरी फॉर मी बिकॉज़ आई थिंक पीपल आर स्कैरियर देन मॉन्स्टर्स people will do bad things to you monsters are fictional they can't if i if i go to quote einstein miss quote miss quote einstein here is that if there is a presence of ghosts and entities they are possibly in the fourth dimension and not in the three dimensional world and they are of a spin which is opposite to ours so they can't influence anything in this in this dimension that we live in so if they are not going to cause me any harm and if they are going to only influence me in my head then that influence me as a person is going to be scarier for me than the ghost itself than the mm. en- that entity itself so right. i dive into i internalize horror i internalize everything i internalize fear and that's that's where i i think i contribute to indian writing because there are very few psychological mm. horror writers mm. true 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 okay as a master craft what uh, aspects are primarily in your mind while you are actually writing fiction particularly horror fiction what are the elements like uh, you have to handle this you have to handle this or uh, like uh, mental issues or what so for me uh, as a writer i take the liberty to explore my environment and explore my characters more mm-hmm. i love getting inside their heads like i said that internalization of the characters is quite important for me mm-hmm. internalization of fear is important for me i don't like cheap scares i don't like like sudden this happened or suddenly somebody jumped out of the bush and grasped the woman lurking in danger lurking in the dark i try to kind of distance myself from these things <laughs> what i like more is what scares me as a person or what used to scare me as a person now nothing scares me mm-hmm. uh, so what used to scare me as a person would be something like if if i hear a scratching sound under my bed i will get scared because of the sound i'll mm. get terrified i'll be more morbidly terrified because of that sound Mm-hmm. but the moment i look down and i see that there is nothing there i am okay i am not scared anymore i don't mm-hmm. feel that there is going to be somebody i switch on the lights i see everywhere i look uh, below my bed nothing is there and i'm fine with it so i think the monster in itself is not scary the thought of the thought of getting annihilated tired by the monster or thought of not knowing what is happening to you is scary as human beings we like to be in control of the situation we like to control everything mm. uh, and we like knowing stuff we like predicting stuff we like knowing what the weather is going to be we like knowing the, what is there for my food we like controlling how much salt to put we like controlling uh, what car should i use we like uh, we like our commute we like to choose our commute we mm. like to be in control but the moment you see that in a foreign land if you take a wrong turn and then you are lost and there are miles of road with mm. nobody around you get scared mm. what is the worst that is going to happen nothing 
on that road you are in your car the windows are rolled up you have that ac on you have a gps on your phone what is mm-hmm. going to happen nothing is going to happen but we still have that moment of getting scared that is the moment which is for me as an author which is important for me that realization of not knowing things that realization of not knowing what is going to happen next that anticipation is scary for me and i try to internalize that anticipation giving my characters motivation of why they do what they do you know sometimes in a lot of in a lot of books i find characters that are inherently evil i don't understand that um i don't understand inherently good characters or inherently evil characters we need to have gray characters there is good in everybody there is bad in everybody we all are shades of gray we are not black and white and mm. that for me is beautiful that for me is i want to show my people that there is beauty in horror there is so much so much glory in horror if you take a step into this darkness you take a plunge into this darkness Mm-hmm. you will find some time to adjust to the light you will find right. some time to adjust to the darkness but the moment you adjust to that darkness you will see there are stars there are galaxies there are flowers that bloom only in the dark you will find that beauty you mm-hmm. just have to like open your mind a little bit to find that beauty and that mm-hmm. for me is important as a writer that for me the environment the characters the motivation of the characters why they do what they do is quite important mm mm-hmm. okay okay so uh, can you explain if a man with a uh, born with mental issues or situations in uh, his or her life make him commit uh, any crimes or behave mysteriously sure. um let's call it a person i would say that it is oh, okay there's no straight forward answer to this uh, but if i were to determine the cause most of the causes are genetic a lot of genes are involved in mental health deviance let's okay. not call it illness let's call it deviance or disorder and okay. what is disorder disorder is basically like not orderly which is mm-hmm. uh sub orderly it could either be sub orderly it could be not orderly or it could be like completely out of order so let's call them disorders or deviances so these mm-hmm. mental health deviances come primarily from genetics however not everybody born with those specific set of genes are going to get mm-hmm. a mental health um disorder or a deviance in the mm-hmm. future and it's not necessarily that somebody who's not born with the genes is not going to get it mm-hmm. you know it's it's all it's all uh, quite uh, hush posh uh, okay. if i may okay. uh, right there but it is a mixture of both environment and genes environment is something called as gene environment interaction so alone the environment does not influence it okay but an environment influencing an already impaired gen- genetic material Okay, okay or let's not call it impaired or deviated genetic material if bad environment plus uh deviated genes they together increase the likelihood okay, of a person okay. going through some mental deviance i'll give okay. an example if if i have the genes that are marked for schizophrenia okay and there is a person b who has who does not have the genes marked mm. as schizophrenia Okay. and we both get the same environment my chances mm. of getting schizophrenia are only slightly higher only slightly higher than the other person we both have good environment mm. but now we are both put into extremely bad environment like abusive parents alcoholism in the family mm. um physical abuse sexual abuse uh, mm. then uh, continuous stress uh lack of motivation and uh, lack of nutrition lack of proper mm-hmm. nutrition if these are the conditions in my house mm-hmm. and i have the genes of schizophrenia and my brother does not the chances of me getting schizophrenia shoot up extremely okay. high right right for this guy for my brother they go slightly up but not as high as me 
So right. what does it tell us is that if I get a bad environment and I have the genes that are the markers of schizophrenia, mm-hmm. I the chances of me getting schizophrenia are higher. So not to not to say that it is only genetic. Sixty percent of it is genetic. Sixty seventy percent of our behavior is genetic. Mm-hmm. But the environment interacting with our deviated genes is something which is going to cause. or uh, mental disorders or mental deviances okay 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 so uh, do you think that uh, okay any person with uh, mental issues may have uh, necessarily personality disorder or dual personality um not necessary so there is a broad spectra of mental disorders there is a broad spectrum like it's like physical illness okay okay uh, so the broad spectrum suggests us that you could have anything which is deviant from the regular would be considered under this umbrella of a mental deviance or a mental disorder mm-hmm. so if you are perpetually sad or perpetually depressed it is md major depressive disorder mm-hmm. uh, so there's something like anorexia bulimia uh, then um, there is dyslexia there is uh, ptsd there is bipolar disorder so the, essentially a broad spectrum of diseases and one of and personality disorders so you will have narcissistic personality disorder etc etc mm-hmm. one of these personality traits personality disorders would be your did which is okay. dissociative identity disorder or okay. in layman's term we can call it multiple personality or dual personality disorder Mm-hmm. so not essentially that everybody who goes through some kind of a mental trauma would have different personalities so to speak there is a small very tiny segment of people who have this spe- specific disease this peculiar disease uh, and that is termed as did or dissociative identity disorder okay. and in that you will see that different personalities have different set of skill sets one personality could speak fluent gujarati another personality could speak fluent hebrew and the main person would not even know that he can speak fluent gujarati or hebrew they might right. have different skill set one person could be scared of walking on the highway another mm-hmm. person could be scared of heights they could have different skill sets also they could have like one person is excellent at dancing another person doesn't know how to dance so right. you know like these kind of and not necessarily that a man has to be a man in the uh, did a man could be could have a woman's personality also uh, inside of him so dissociative identity is used to call as multiple a uh, multiple mm-hmm. personality disorder before now dissociative identity is is kind of complicated but has a specific very very tiny specific section of people who go through that okay so have you ever uh, come across a situation where a person with mental disorder commits crime okay but after regaining consciousness uh, such a person feels guilty so what you are uh, suggesting here is possibly a very very violent episode of either psychosis or schizophrenia or something like that. a violent episode of some kind of an underlying mental health condition so okay. let me paraphrase it this way that every person who has a mental health disorder or a mental health deviance is not going to be violent mm-hmm. and every every person who is violent is not always going to be a person who has mental health disorder mm-hmm. and people without mental health disorders are not necessarily not going to be violent ever so it's a mix right mm-hmm. unfortunately do sometimes untreated mental health uh, conditions could cause some uh, could cause some violent episodes in some mm-hmm. patients if not treated for a long time if it is too late or if it is out of hand uh, or the treatments are not working sometimes mm-hmm. they get out of hand and then the only some patients get violent okay. in any mental health institutions you have a clear distinction between uh people who are categories between people who are violent and people who are docile so the docile has one ward the violent has another ward and criminally insane there is there is a term called criminally insane although okay, i don't like okay. to use the word insane I, okay but, okay 
uh, let's call it crimin criminal mental deviance uh, is is another word altogether and they are like locked up and and uh, usually usually there is like restoration happening and uh, they are going through their forms of therapies and treatments and all mm -hmm. if we are talking about do they feel guilty once they are back to their original reality yes uh, a lot of them do they are like regular people so mm -hmm. um, if if somebody say with schizophrenia schizophrenia mm -hmm. means they are hallucinating they are they are okay. looking at visions they are they don't know what is reality and what is fiction so if if they are going through that visual hallucination phase auditory and visual hallucination phase uh they don't know what they are doing and if they have somebody in front of them who is trying to kill them or something they are going to take action and they are possibly going to get violent okay and once they are snapped back to reality and once you explain them that they did this they will feel guilty okay not all but yeah mm -hmm. a lot of them will feel guilty okay okay so are you uh, planning to write any book now miss any new book yes i am okay. um uh, I am currently working on about three or four movie projects also, which are not oh. my books. Oh, okay. um, so getting some name in the industry out there, people are loving my work. So good thing. Uh, <laughs> let's hope it continues further into the future also. But for my personal, uh, personal likes and uh, for the love of my writing, I am writing a new book. I am. Okay. Um, it's going to be again slightly horror but a very new genre for me extremely psychedelic like american horror story okay, okay. Uh, i want to introduce something which is brand new to india something which is which they have not seen and something dark but again creating a big awareness about something okay, so okay, yeah okay. i am. okay 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 thank you ajinkya for sharing your views and we had a very good and long discussion in fact yes thank you so much for having me it was my pleasure okay